Welcome to iLecture Online and here is a different topic regarding differentiation called implicit differentiation. And I don't know if the word implicit means a lot to anybody, but what that means in, in the terms of math here and taking derivatives is that sometimes you get functions in a format that don't lend themselves very easily to write as y equals some function of x. And um, it makes it a little bit more difficult to find the derivative, to find the dy dx, or as we sometimes call y prime. And so instead of doing it the old-fashioned way by somehow rewriting the function so we have y on one side and everything else on the other side, and sometimes that's not even possible, then what we would like to do is take the derivative with respect to x on both sides of the equation then algebraically solve for dy dx. Hmm, what did I just say? Well, just watch and see how this is done. I'm going to take the ddx of both sides of the equation. So I'm going to take the ddx of the left side of the equation, x squared plus y squared, and set that equal to the ddx of the right side of the equation. Notice, since I did the exact same thing to both sides of the equation, I didn't really change anything yet. All right. Um, or, well, I did change something. I just didn't change one side and not the other side, which, of course, you can do in mathematics. All right, let's do that now. So let's take the ddx, the derivative with respect to x of x squared. So that would be 2x times the derivative of x, which is dx dx. Usually we don't write dx dx because dx dx is just 0, or I'm sorry, not 0, but just 1, and so that would just simply disappear. So we normally don't write that, but I wrote it this time so you can see how that applies when I take the ddx of the second part of that function. So that would be... Uh, plus the ddx of y squared, which is 2y times dy dx. It's kind of like using the chain rule. And let me show you a quick example. If I take the ddx, uh, not the dx dx, but the ddx, <clears throat> the ddx of, let's say, um, x squared plus 5 to the third power. And so, oh, I know how to do that. I simply take the exponent. This is 3 times x squared plus 5 to the exponent minus 1, which is 2, times, of course, the derivative of what's inside. So that would be 2x. Well, I did exactly the same thing here. You can think of this as being the quantity x to the second power. And so what I did was I put the exponent in front times x to the exponent minus 1, which would basically 2x to the first power, times the derivative of what's inside, times the d dx of x, which is dx dx, or dx over dx, and that then becomes simply 1, and you don't write it. But here, if I look at it here, you can then see that taking the d dx of y squared, I can take the 2, the exponent, put it in front, y to the, then the, 2 minus 1, which is 1 power, times the derivative of what's inside, which is the d dx of y, which is dy dx. And that's where that came from. All right? And so that is equal then to the d dx of 50, and of course, taking the derivative of a constant, that's equal to 0. So we end up with 2x plus 2y dy dx is equal to 0. And now we have to algebraically solve for dy dx, which is what we're trying to find the derivative of y with respect to x. So that means I'm going to move my 2x to the other side. So we have 2y dy dx is equal to minus 2x. And then I divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient of dy dx. So divide the left side by 2y, divide the right side by 2y. And so we get dy dx is equal to, the 2's cancel out, minus x over y. <clears throat> That then becomes the answer we were looking for. And notice that in this case, the answer, the dy dx, the derivative of y respect to x, is not simply a function of x alone, it's also a function of y as well, x and y combined. And that's how you do implicit differentiation. All right, now that you see how that's done, let's come up with some more examples to give you some confidence on how to do these.